Barcelona is a city located in the Catalonia region. I didn't realize this despite having taken Spanish language and culture classes all through high school, but Catalonia is a distinct region that has its own traditions and even its own language called Catalan. While we were here, we saw both Spanish and Catalan being used. In 2017, the Parliament of Catalonia even filed for independence from Spain, however, they are still considered part of Spain. People here have long believed that they are independent. You can see it in this city. They have very vibrant traditions, and it's a city known for its culture, its art, and beautiful weather. We visited in mid-February, and they had their first rain in three months, so we got rather unlucky. But I still can't wait to show you what we did with our time and show you the highlights of the city. We're at the airport, headed to Barcelona for Florian's birthday. Barcelona is a quick two and a half hour flight from Berlin. We have arrived in Barcelona and we're about to get our first bit of fresh air and sunshine. We stayed in the Gothic Quarter, which has the quintessential European charm. Terraced buildings, fountains, town squares, cobbled streets, and just tons of charm. mid-afternoon I thought a great way to start our trip would to be to grab a snack. We got ourselves some prosciutto. This is a type of cured leg of pork that's produced in Spain and sometimes Portugal. And of course one cannot come to Spain without mentioning tapas. Since we arrived mid-afternoon we stopped for a tapas and sangria afternoon snack at La Peninsular. Here we were able to choose from a variety of options. A lot of them were seafood or deep fried. My favorite is patatas bravas. This is a very common one. It's deep fried potatoes with some different sauces. They come on these small plates and they're great for sharing. I've made it to Barceloneta Beach. The beach is one of the biggest attractions here. Since we're here in February, it's a little bit cold for bathing suits, but you can tell that a lot of people are still hanging out here. My favorite thing about being in Barcelona was how alive the city felt. Like I said, we were here in February, and February in Berlin is so closed down. Everybody's in hibernation mode. When we were here in Barcelona, everybody was out, alive, living life, listening to music, eating food. It really just felt like people were having the best time, even though it was a normal day. We stumbled across this bar called Suminia. It is themed like a circus tent. I thought it was absolutely incredible. The decorations were all in 100% and the cocktails were all themed and not very expensive for what you got. There was even a magician. Take anyone. Anybody put you also. Take anyone. Okay. I'll take any cards. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Ah. No, no, no. Take, no, take, take. Okay, well, now I'm okay. I'll show to everyone I don't want to see nothing. Oh, okay. Oh, this one. I wow. didn't even know they made that. And the idea is losing. I don't know the position exactly, but anyway, this is pretty middle. So now the idea is uh, let's see the first card of the deck. The first one, okay? In this case, Jack of Time. What was your card? No? Okay. But when I take the jack, when I move the jack here on the head, sometimes it changes. What? A really wonderful way to get to know a city is by taking a free walking tour. These walking tours are free to get in and then you tipped what you think they are worth at the end. I think that Barcelona is a really great place to do this type of tour because there are so many layers of history. It is just layer upon layer of history to see in this city. 
Walking tours are really helpful because they show you what to look at, what to pay attention to, and really give you an idea of the basics of the city. Our walking tour was through mainly the old part of town, focusing a lot on the Gothic Quarter. I was able to get a lot of information about parts of the Spanish history that I didn't know, and additional information about the Catalan region in particular. Additionally, we were able to see the Roman ruins, there's an old church, the old church has all of these animals on top, including a unicorn. And that's the kind of feature that I wouldn't notice on my own. So it's really awesome to have someone there to guide you, to tell you, to look up and notice something really important. As I've mentioned, Barcelona is known for its beautiful weather. Fortunately, we did have some gray skies and a bit of rain. And unfortunately, while we were sailing, we had no wind, which really is not great for sailing, as it turns out. But we had fun with it anyways. We had our own very own captain on board. I would highly recommend to anybody who has not gone sailing before to bring some motion to sickness tablets. It can make for a really long journey if you do find out that you get motion sickness while on the trip. We happen to be visiting during the festival of Santa Eulalia. She is one of the patron saints of Barcelona. She was a 13-year-old girl who stood up for Christianity in the face of tyranny. The festival is held in the winter around the middle of February each year. It includes many different types of celebrations. Eulalia was alive from the 3rd to 4th century. There are parades to showcase paper mache giants that dance through the city. In the off-season, many of these live at La Casa del Entremesos, so you can see them even if you visit when there is no festival happening. And my personal favorite is the human towers. These are called castellas. This is a tradition that is relatively new. It dates back to the 18th century, and when we remember that Santa Eulalia was alive in the 4th century, we start to see how new it is. This building of a human tower is a competition that teams train for each season. And, of course, no festival is complete without some fireworks. After all this history, I'm ready for another snack. So on our way to Montjuic, we stopped at La Churie for some churros. Some churros and chocolate. These are deep fried dough that's then dipped into a bowl of chocolate. And it is just as good as it sounds. So I highly recommend trying it. After our churro snack, we hiked up to the Telegraph to Montjuic, the Montjuic cable car. Having never been here before, I thought that the cable car would save us much more of the climb than it did. And at 9 euros per person one way, it was a bit of a splurge. But I do have to say, this was one of my favorite ways to view the city. It was laid out before you, with the hill on one side, the ocean on the other, and all of Barcelona on display. This was the only view of Sagrada Familia we had on this weekend trip. It was far too far out of our way and just a bit too expensive for us to prioritize it. I do hope to come back in 2028 after it is scheduled for its completion. At the top of Montjuic, we found the Fortress of Montjuic, which is often referred to as a castle, but it has never been. 
It's been a military compound turned storage fort turned tourist destination. Here we took a 45 minute tour to learn a little bit more about its history. And we got to see some pretty dark storms over the harbor. So really awesome view. On our way down, we opted to walk to the point in which we had caught the cable car and ride the funicular all the way back down. We were able to take this straight down the hill into the underground. This was all for the price of a normal transit ticket, which is much more affordable than the cable car, though quite a bit less scenic. So you could do this on your way up the hill and save yourself quite a bit of walking. After this trendy bar on our route, and we grabbed their house made from it. It was absolutely excellent and I would have happily stayed for another, but we had a busy weekend fitting everything in. Truthfully, the Maritime Museum is not one that I would have picked for myself, but I'm really glad that I went. I thought that it was a well curated museum that really showed the different facets of maritime history. There was even a large warship in the very gorgeous building that has easily digestible facts for those who maybe aren't as familiar with around boats and the history of them. This museum was huge and could be enjoyed for many hours, so be sure to give yourself plenty of time if you are interested in visiting. All of the museums in Barcelona are free after 3 p.m. on Sundays. I think this is the most convenient form of free entry I have seen. Many cities will do first Sunday or maybe third Thursday. However, I found this often doesn't work with my travel arrangements. We use this to visit the fort at the top of Mount Duke and to visit the Maritime Museum. For our final day, we rented a car and drove just about an hour outside of Barcelona to visit the monastery at Montserrat. Here we were able to park in a small town just below the hills and hike up. Our hike was about three hours in total and delivered amazing views both on the way up and on the way down. I would highly recommend this. However, you can also get there by cable car, train, or even car if you choose. The last few steps coming in to Montserrat. The monastery is free to enter, and so is the side excursion to visit the Black Madonna. The Black Madonna sits at the high altar, and she is carved out of wood, and believed to have survived through war and the many times of political unrest that this area has seen. Many people like to come up here to rub her hand in order to get good luck or have their requests honored. This is known to be a place of pilgrimage for Christians throughout the area. I thought it was a really great place to visit because this room is just gilded beyond belief. There is something to look at in every direction, a really beautiful work of art that I would highly recommend visiting. This was a jam-packed four days of fun in Barcelona, Spain. I hope that you enjoyed our journey and come back for our next trip.